Hello. The goal for this video is to describe transubstantiation. That's a big word. Maybe for you it's a scary word. But I hope to break it down and make it understandable so that you then can tell me and tell others what we as Catholics mean by transubstantiation. Spell it out. T-R-A-N-S-U-B. S-T-A-N. T-I-A. T-I-O-N. Transubstantiation. Every Sunday when you go up to receive Holy Communion, the priest, the deacon, or a lay minister of communion holds up the host or holds up the chalice and says to you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. What do you believe that bread is or that cup of wine is? Do you believe it's just bread and wine? Do you believe it's just a symbol, a representation of Jesus? Well, if you do, you're not adhering to a Catholic understanding of the Eucharist. For us Catholics, Christ is really, truly present in the bread and wine. We believe there has been a transformation of the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Christ. This has been such a radical teaching that most non-Catholic Christians do not believe in it. They believe that the Eucharist, when they do receive it, is a symbol, it's a sign. It's a reminder of Jesus, but it isn't Jesus himself. And even back in the Roman period, when the early persecution of the church was going on, many Romans looked at Christians and said, they're cannibals. They talk about eating someone's flesh, drinking someone's blood. That's what they're doing down there in the catacombs. Dastardly things, horrible, evil things. Well, we have to ask ourselves, how do we talk about Jesus as in the bread and in the wine. Because we believe he's really present, and yet we know when we come up, we don't see a piece of flesh in our hands, and we don't literally drink blood. So the term that's been used is transubstantiation. To explain transubstantiation, I would like you to look at this slide. What are all these creatures here? Of course, they're all dogs. Yet, how do you know they're a dog? I mean, to look at them, they're very different. This dog is white, pure white. This dog is brown, more or less. This dog has floppy ears. This dog is big. This dog is small. They come in all different shapes and sizes, and yet somehow we know that all of them are dogs. This is something a philosopher named Aristotle pondered a great deal. How is it that dogs, cats, horses, even sometimes fruit trees, can look very different, and yet we know their essence, what they are, stays the same. It is what it is. A dog is a dog, despite tall or short or brown or black or white, floppy ears or short cropped ears. And Aristotle distinguished a thing's substance from their accidents. The substance of something is what we might call their soul, what makes them what they are. So think about people in your class. Think about your friends. Some are tall, some are short, some have blonde hair, some are darker, some are lighter, some come from different races, and yet we know that they're all human beings. For Aristotle, what makes them human is that, the very thing they are. Meanwhile, tall, short, intelligent, not as intelligent, athletic, not as athletic, uh, brown hair, black hair, these are all accidents. Accidents are variables that can change. So someone can go from being not too athletic to being quite athletic. They can go from brown hair, like I was once, to gray hair now. Those are accidents. doesn't change the fact that I'm a human being. So for Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas, who borrowed from Aristotle, this served as a wonderful way to understand the Eucharist. I want you to look at another clip from a movie and see if you can understand what I'm getting at.
Mr. Cratchit. Here, sir. Do you know what time it is? Yes, sir. What time is it? Eighteen minutes past the hour, sir. Eighteen and a half minutes past the hour. What do you mean, coming here at this time of day? I'm sorry, sir. I am behind my time. <laughs> yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you will, please. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, my friend. I'm not going to stand for this any longer. Therefore, therefore, I am going to double your salary. Double my salary, sir. Yes, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> <laughs> A Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> I'll double your salary for a start, and I'll endeavor to assist your family in any way I can. And Tim, Tim will walk again and grow stronger and stronger upon my life, he will. <laughs> well, we'll discuss the particulars this afternoon over a Christmas bowl. Hmm. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing, sir. Well, it's just that... Nothing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> My good fellow. We'll make up the fire before we freeze to death. <laughs> Buy some more coal. Before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Yes, sir. Ebenezer Scrooge was better than his word. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man as the old city knew. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. It was said of Ebenezer Scrooge that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us. Everyone. When you think about the character Scrooge, you think about a guy who was really mean, really cheap, and yet there was a total transformation. He completely changed by the end of that movie. And yet he looked the same. There was nothing about his appearance that had changed, and yet his very self had changed. We go back to when we talked about a conversion, it's similar. We can say the bread and wine convert into the body and blood of Christ. Just as Scrooge truly converted into being a sinful, very small-minded person into a large-hearted person. So that, I hope, can somewhat get at this idea of transubstantiation. Let's just break down the word. Trans, which means a change. Substance. And then the process of, sheation. So really what we're talking about in transubstantiation is the process whereby the substance of bread and the substance of wine are really changed. There is a change from that reality into the body and blood of Christ. But, like Scrooge, the accidents don't change. So the bread still tastes like bread. The wine still tastes like wine. All the things that the senses say are bread and wine have been changed. There is a real change in the very essence of what we're receiving. And so that's how we as Catholics can talk about the bread and wine truly being, in reality being, the body and blood of Christ.